there folks, welcome to the channel. I'm glad you could make it because today I wanted to create a unique sausage making experience for you. One that was fun, exciting, and extremely delicious. Most importantly, I wanted it to be easy to make. So no matter where you're at in your sausage making journey, you should be able to make this absolutely amazing sausage. The recipe that I wrote for today's episode is going to be called the Pepper Jack Griller, and I can't wait to show you how it's made. Let's get started. Are you ready for today's sausage? The smoked pepper jack griller. This is what we're working with. We got a little beef, a little pork back fat, and some pork shoulder. Feel free to mix and match the proteins as you see fit. Cut the meat into pieces small enough to fit into the head of your grinder, and once you're done, place it in the freezer till it gets nice and frosty under 34F. And just so you know, you guys are the inspiration behind today's sausage. You requested a no-nitrite sausage that you could smoke that was easy to make, a little spicy, a little cheesy, very delicious, and a visually appealing smoke ring. Let's see if we can make that happen. As far as flavor goes, let's start off with a little salt. Next up is the black pepper granulated garlic and onion powder. We're going to add just a touch of MSG. And finally, we're going to add some non-fat dry milk. This is not only a binder that's going to give us a slightly better texture and help retain more moisture, but it's also going to add a beautiful creamy element to this sausage. If you need any non-fat dry milk, check the description box. I'll put a link in there. But just remember, if you have your own personal favorite binder, you could use that as well. Not a big deal. I'm also going to be adding some high temp pepper jack cheese to this recipe. We are going to be cooking this recipe a little hotter and a little faster than we normally do. And I don't want my cheese to be melting out all over the place. High temp cheese is perfect for that. So we're going to be putting in roughly about 10% high temp cheese, and I'm loving the size of those cubes. For me, that's the perfect size for a sausage. There we go. All right, guys, we've got our spices. We've got our cheese. Let's look at the casing. And for this sausage, I think the 2932 Hall casing from the sausage maker is the most appropriate size. These casings come in a brine solution or often they're salt packed as well. And all you got to do is rinse them, flush them, and let them sit in cool water overnight. At least that's what I do. I also like to add a little baking soda to that water. If you know, you know. All right, now it's time to look at our meat. It has been properly chilled. It's under 34 degrees Fahrenheit. I like to hover around that 32 F. Let's grind this on a six millimeter plate. Beautiful grind, great particle definition, the fat was not smeared, and this is what you can expect when you grind your meat cold and your knife and plate are sharp. Let's go ahead and mix everything together. We're going to put this in our KitchenAid stand mixer on setting one, and we're going to start by adding our dry spices. Once again, remember, your meat at this stage should be below 34 degrees Fahrenheit. Those are critical temperatures when you grind and you mix. Once the dry spices are in, we can add our liquid, and for the liquid, we're adding beer. I think it's going to give it a beautiful flavor. If you don't want to add beer, you can add cream. I think that'll be great as well. And the liquid that we're adding is going to help soften everything up and get it to that nice and sticky stage a whole lot quicker. When you can grab a small little handful of it and it can stick to the bottom of your hand without falling off, much like this, you'll know that your meat has been mixed properly. Now, notice we haven't added our cheese. I usually add cheese at the very last minute. Once my meat has been mixed well enough, in goes the cheese. And this ensures that we keep those nice little cubes. We don't destroy them during the mixing process. And all you're going to do is mix for about five or 10 seconds until everything is well incorporated. And that's what this is going to look like. Now let's get this into a casing and we're going to be using a dedicated sausage stuffer with a three quarter inch stuffing tube. That is the perfect size for this size casing. And if you don't already have a dedicated sausage stuffer, I encourage you to take a look at the description box because this unit right here, will immediately level up your sausage, all right? Let's go ahead and put that meat in there, and you can smash it in there if you want, or you can gently place it in there and pound it down with your fist like I'm doing here. Either way works, the idea is to minimize the air pockets between each fistful of meat. Let's get that onto the base, and when it comes to putting your casing onto the horn, just lubricate the exterior part of your horn with a little bit of the water that you soak the casing in. Stick your fingers in the casing, and look how beautiful and translucent that is. This is going to be such a good tender casing. Put a little bit of water in the casing, 
and then go ahead and slide it on the horn. And on every level, basically what you're doing is lubricating it with water. If you've done it correctly, you should be able to slide your casing back and forth just like so. And if your casing is a little tight, you can always re-lubricate it or just reduce the size of your horn. All right, let's get a knot at the end of the casing and then I'm gonna use a sausage pricker. You could use a pin or a needle and just poke a little hole at the very end of your casing that lets any air that's in the horn escape. All right, when it comes to putting sausage meat into a casing, there is a delicate balance between pressure and finesse. And what I'm doing here is just putting very gentle pressure at the tip of the horn with my thumb and my forefinger. If you squeeze the casing, Okay, you should be able to make an indentation. If you squeeze it and it feels like it's going to explode, you've stuffed it too tightly. But check this out. When I squeeze it, there is a small indentation that's left behind. This lets me know that when I go to make my links, they're not going to rupture or give me any kind of casing blowout. If you feel it's a little on the tight side, release the pressure of your finger and your thumb. If you feel it's a little loose, just tighten that pressure up. With enough practice, you'll get the hang of it. What I'm using here is a tool called the Sausage Stuffing Horn Cleaner, and it's a brilliant tool from the sausage maker. It allows you to clean out that stuffing horn, and it makes the overall cleanup a whole lot easier. Basically, you get any of that excess meat out. Check this out. Completely empty. Beautiful. Okay, now let's link our sausage. How you link your sausage is up to you. If you want to make a coil like this and put a couple skewers through it, you could totally do that. That would be fun. We're going to do you know, six inch links for this particular sausage, and each link will have alternating twists. The first one will be three twists away from you. The next one will be three twists towards you. The third one will be three twists away from you. You see how that goes? Just alternate until you're finished. And it looks like we're done. Now remember, this is a fresh sausage, no curing salt. So technically you can cook this right now and it'll be fine. What I like to do though is dry the casing up a little bit, get it to tighten up to the meat. Also these twist bits right here, I like for them to dry up. So your sausage meat isn't spilling out while you're cooking. You know how that goes. Let's go ahead and take our sausage pricker. Or if you have like a needle or something, you could use that as well. And we're going to give our sausage a little poke, specifically looking for air pockets. This will help the casing adhere to the meat better and improve the snappability of your sausage. Okay, let's take this and put it in the fridge overnight. Like I said, I do want to dry the casing out a bit and let those spices come together. So into the fridge it goes. And it's now the next day and we need to get our grill set up. I'm using a ceramic grill by Grill grills. The model is called Kong. And if you're in the market for a ceramic grill, I'll put a link in the description box below. This is an extraordinary unit and a purchase you most certainly won't regret. Let's get our coals lit up and we're going to close that down. Now what I'm looking for is a temp of 200 Fahrenheit, so not too hot. Add your favorite smoking wood once you get to temp. And if you have heat deflectors, add those as well. We want to cook these sausages on indirect heat. So let's go ahead and get our pepper jack grillers ready. Our temperature is 200. We've already added our hickory wood in case you were wondering. And we are right about 200 Fahrenheit. And this is absolutely perfect for what we're doing it. We're going to be cooking these not super low and slow, but definitely not hot and fast. All right. So we're going to place these on those deflector plates. This is going to allow that heat to come around and create this beautiful convection system. It's going to cook these sausages. Amazing. Just wait and see. All right, let's go ahead and close this down. Let the smoke do its thing. And we'll check back on it in a minute. As far as the vents, we're going to shut that down to about 0.5. That's the top vent. And the bottom vent, where the air comes in, we're going to close that first little bit right there. And notice it's marked with numbers. We're going to bring that second bit all the way to the one. Just leave one little spot open, about a thumb mark full. And that's going to allow just enough air to come in to keep that nice low 200, 225 temperature. All right. So what I like to do about halfway through the cooking process is flip them. You don't technically need to do that, but I like to check on them, make sure that everything's going the way that I want. And it looks like these are cooking beautifully. Nice, beautiful smoke color. Casing is tightening up really nice. And if you could take a closer look at the deflector plate, you'll see very little rendered fat right there at the bottom. And that's exactly what you want. You certainly don't want puddles of fat because then you're going to have a bigger problem when you eat it. Final check. We're looking for an internal temp of 155 Fahrenheit. The sausages are nice and plump, nice, firm, bouncy feel to it. It's always a good sign. What's our temp? 155.7. Absolutely perfect. Let's take them off and give them a taste. The smoked pepper jack griller. Take a peek. 
add this sausage. Look at that pepper jack cheese just studded throughout. We've got a beautiful smoke ring, nice smooth slice, incredibly juicy. Give it a little squeeze. The casing is tight and it's stuck to that sausage meat. I could tell you this is going to be a nice snappy bite. Now we did cook this a little hotter than we normally did because it's an uncured sausage. And I'm loving the way it came out. We cooked it to an internal of 155 and that cheese is very present. It's very creamy. Let's go ahead and take a bite, see how it tastes. Mm. Hmm. Oh. That is one tasty sausage. I mean, wow. I'm kind of floored for how simple it is. This thing is packing a ton of flavor. The garlic is coming through beautifully. The beer was a great addition. And that pepper jack cheese mixed with the meat, it's bringing that perfect combination of low level heat, creaminess. It's absolutely delicious. Hang on a minute. Mm. Mm. Woo! I'm gonna be completely honest with you right now. Some of the sausages that we make here on this channel, they're not for everybody. The flavors are a little wild. Sometimes they're hard to make, whatever. But this one, the smoked pepper jack griller, this should be on your short list. It's super easy, it's ultra delicious. Cook it up on your grill and it doesn't matter what kind of grill you have. I'm gonna put a link to the recipe that has all the details, all the temperatures, so that you could go home, make this sausage, and look like a sausage making superstar. I guarantee you, you're gonna absolutely love this sausage. If you have any questions about the smoked pepper jack griller, leave them in the comment section below. And if you got something out of this video, or if you liked it, give this video a great big thumbs up. In case you missed it, in yesterday's episode, the Supreme Pizza Sausage, the sausage maker was giving away 300 bucks worth of sausage making supplies and casings and all kinds of really great stuff to help you get going in your sausage making journey. It's not too late to enter. I'm gonna put a link to that video in the description box below. Be sure to check it out, register to win, and I hope you do. If you are new to this channel and you enjoy the art of sausage making, don't even think about it. Hit that subscribe button and that notification bell because we have got all types of videos that are right up your alley, including tomorrow's episode where a very special guest is going to be joining us to show you how he makes elk truffle snack sticks. You are absolutely not going to want to miss it. Thanks a lot for being a part of Celebrate Sausage. We will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.